Uh, look, this morning I'm asking for money. <laughs> You'll find the ushers have already barricaded the doors so you can't leave. My suggestion is that you just sit back and make the best of it. I want to make this clear right up front. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm being open and transparent here. Next Sunday, we are celebrating the kickoff to our annual pledge drive. So this Sunday, as you all have your pledge cards in hand and you are contemplating just how much you are going to pledge to give for 2015, I'm going to remind all of you, all of us, why we give to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Jacksonville. And although I joke about it, I have absolutely no qualms about asking you to financially support UUCJ. I have no qualms because I love this church, and I know you love this church, and that this church is worth investing in. So I'm not afraid or ashamed to ask you for money. In fact, I'm honored as the minister of this church to ask you to live out your values, to incarnate your values by giving. Now, before I make the hard sell, I got a couple of things to say, a couple of things related to the dis-ease we so often feel when we each get hit up for money. First, remember, you can't always say no. Please understand that when I ask you for your pledge, or when I ask you to increase your pledge for the next year, you have the right to refuse. It won't hurt my feelings. And I won't think any less of you. I'm not going to guilt trip you. So it's cool. I'm not sure where this comes from in our culture, but there seems to be a, a strain of Americanism that has taught some of us that we should just get downright offended when someone asks us to give things that we're not already inclined or predisposed to give. As if being presented with a request somehow demeans our humanity in some way, and it is not my intention to demean any of you this morning, so please do not take offense where no offense is meant. Second. Part of the reason I think donors are often reluctant to increase their support for a cause is because they feel that a request for more suggests that there is a lack of appreciation for the amount that has already been given. So before we move on, I want to say this to all of you, any of you who have given any amount of money or time to this church in 2014. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the generosity you have already shown, that you have already lived by sacrificing to give to this church. Every year we ask you to be stewards of this place, to give abundantly of your time, treasure, and talent. And as one of the leaders of this church, that means that I'm a steward of your time. It's your time. It's your treasure. It's your talent. And I want you to know that I take that role very seriously, and I will always endeavor to give you my utmost as I strive to walk worthy of the trust that you have placed in me. So thank you again for all that you have already given to this church. So why should you make an annual pledge if you never have before? Why should you continue to give to UUCJ if you already do? Why should you increase your pledge for 2015 if you already give? I could tell you that giving is a reward unto itself. I could echo here the words of St. Francis of Assisi, who said, it is in giving that we receive. I could tell you that giving is a spiritual practice, and if performed regularly, will help turn us into generous people. I could tell you that giving without thought of any return is a form of altruism, and altruism just may be the highest expression of our faith. I could tell you all of those things. But it's all a bunch of baloney. Not to demean what our kids said. They had some great answers. I love that. They're more spiritual than I am. No, I'm not, I'm not here uh, to talk about that today because, abstractly speaking, all of that probably is true, but these principles are not applicable to what I'm bringing before you this morning. I'm not appealing to you to make some altruistic act of giving for the sake of giving. I'm not even appealing to you to give so you can become a better person. You see, what I'm asking for today isn't actually a sacrifice. It is an investment. Today, this morning, I am talking the language of finance and economics. Today, this morning, I'm speaking to you as capitalists who are shrewdly considering how best to invest your wealth so as to see the highest possible return on your investment. Today, this morning, I'm here to tell you your best investment is the Unitarian Universalist Church of Jacksonville. 
I can say this with confidence because I know something about each and every one of you. I'm not the NSA. <laughs> but I can surmise that if you're seated here today in this sacred hall, or if you're participating in this worship remotely, it means likely there are things in life that you consider to be of ultimate value. If you're listening to my words right now, it likely means that you believe there exist things in this life that are worth more than money. UUCJ takes your money and then converts it into those things of ultimate value. We are like a factory. We take your time, treasure, and talent, and we transform those raw materials into concrete manifestations of love, justice, compassion, community, things you cannot put a price tag on, the things that each of you here today believe are worth more than your money. Let me share with you how we do this. And let me also say how we do this is a huge reason why I am so proud to be a part of this congregation. UUCJ helps change the world for the better, starting with our own neighborhood and city. Let me give you just a few examples. We help feed hungry people here in Arlington. In 2010, UUCJ created the Arlington Community Garden. Last year, as I said earlier this morning, that garden produced over 1,000 pounds of fresh fruit and fresh vegetables that was donated to the Arlington Food Bank. Our organic fruits and vegetables are the only source of fresh produce for the local food bank. This is a UUCJ ministry. We started it. We maintain it. It's ours, and we should take great pride in it. Another way we change the world, perhaps you've heard of it, I care. I hope you've heard of it by now. UUCJ is a proud member congregation of iCare, which is an interfaith collaborative that has recently succeeded in establishing a day center for the homeless in Jacksonville. iCare seeks to compel city leaders, including people like Mayor Alvin Brown, State Attorney Angela Corey, and Superintendent of Schools Nikolai Vitti, to support programs designed to create jobs in impoverished neighborhoods, enact restorative justice to end the school-to-prison pipeline, increase literacy in our public schools. At a recent clergy meeting, one of the eye care staff members mentioned that there is no stronger advocate for the restorative justice campaign than UUCJ. As you can see, as an active faith community, we are not afraid to tackle the big issues. We're not afraid to reach out and work with other churches and faith communities to help transform this city in the name of justice. Another way that we help our own community. Did you know that earlier this year, Jacksonville, Florida was identified as having the third highest HIV and AIDS rate in the nation? Not the state. Jacksonville had the third highest HIV and AIDS rate in the nation. HIV and AIDS do not receive the same kind of publicity they have in years past. Treatment has certainly come a long way. But don't let that fool you. It is a dangerous disease. There still is no cure. 16% of those infected with HIV don't even know it. One third of all HIV patients are diagnosed late in their illness. You may not have known this, but UUCJ hosts a free HIV testing service here on site. It is housed over in the South Wing. Our HIV testing ministry literally helps to save lives. Speaking of sexual health, one of the most important ministries we offer to both our children and adults comes through our religious education program. By now, I hope most of you are familiar with the Our Whole Lives program, or OWL. OWL is a comprehensive, sex-positive, values-based approach to understanding human health and human sexuality. It was developed as a joint project by the Unitarian Universalist Association and the United Church of Christ. I'm quoting UU Minister Reverend Lena Breen here, who said, to offer sexuality education in a congregation is to acknowledge that human sexuality is simply too important, too beautiful, too potentially dangerous to be ignored in a religious community. Think back on your sexual education growing up, if you had one. <laughs> if your education was anything like mine, 
then like me, you probably wish you could have participated in an OWL class as a child or young person. Your increase in pledging over the past few years has allowed us to train several OWL teachers here within our own congregation. We even hosted an OWL teacher training on our campus this summer where we then equipped teachers from Georgia to Texas. We did that this summer. And OWL is just one aspect of our growing religious education program. Over the past year, UUCJ has hosted yoga classes, drum circles, meditation classes, discussion groups, kids yoga, kids gardening classes, and with increased pledges, we can provide scholarships for members to attend UU leadership experiences, participate at Florida District Assembly and the UU General Assembly. Even if you don't personally partake in any of these classes or scholarship opportunities, you still benefit from these classes and learning opportunities because they are enriching the lives of your fellow congregants who make up a part of your community. And we're back to that word again, community. That's what it's all about, isn't it? If you're a member here or a longtime friend, then you already know this little secret. UUCJ is a special place filled with special people. There are precious few other places where you can explore your own spiritual, moral, and intellectual path along with fellow seekers in a spirit of mutual love without fear of condemnation. Our church is a place where you can celebrate the wonder, the mystery, the awe of creation without being coerced to accept a set of beliefs that doesn't truly resonate in your own heart or mind. Our church is a place where you can gather regularly to encounter the sacred without having to compromise your conscience or sacrifice your sense of integrity by giving lip service to a creed you don't necessarily believe in. That's a rare place, even in 2014. It's a rare place. And in case you haven't noticed, more and more people are discovering just what a truly special and remarkable place this is. Our attendance and membership continues to grow in addition to our satellite branch in Fernandina Beach, we offer our worship services online every Sunday. We are posting them on YouTube. Uh, we pack you in like sardines every Sunday to continue this kind of growth, to continue to be a beacon of true religious freedom, to continue to be and become a beloved community. We need your support. The title of this sermon, as you may know if you took the time to look at it online, is Incarnating Our Values. I really like the word incarnate. It's Latin. Literally, it means in the flesh, to make corporeal, to give a body to. Transcendent values, high ideals, a lofty spirit. Oh, they're all wonderful things. But they don't do much to put food in the belly of a hungry man. They don't give a homeless woman a place to shower. They don't give us a place where we can gather regularly to celebrate and mourn and sojourn together. UUCJ is worthy of your giving because it gives flesh and blood and bone to our aspirations and our ideals, those things that are worth more than money. We have titled our annual stewardship campaign this year, The Blue Boat Home. We named it after the Peter Mayer song that so many of us are familiar with. In the song, the big blue boat home is, of course, this planet, Earth. Like the Earth itself, this church is both a home and a vehicle for each and every one of us. And like the Earth, we must be faithful stewards of this wonderful gift we have received, not just for our own enjoyment and use, but for the generations that will come after us. You see, as with our relationship to the Earth, so too, our relationship with this church begins in the middle of the story. We are neither the first, nor will we be the last stewards of this church. For those who don't know, the Unitarian Church of Jacksonville started in 1906 in the home of Jacksonville Mayor and U.S. Senator Duncan Fletcher. This congregation's roots go back 108 years. Let that sink in, 100 and eight years. We, today, are the direct descendants of a religious legacy that spans over a century. And like you, I look forward with hope and anticipation to seeing what UUCJ will do in its second century in this city. So let us rejoice. 
for the opportunity we all have to build upon the proud legacy of this 108-year-old congregation and of the greater faith we serve. Let us rejoice for the opportunity to add our work and our deeds to that pre-existing foundation so that our children and our children's children can climb to even higher heights. Today, we are writing a new chapter in the grand story of UUCJ, and I invite you to add your voice I invite you to become a part of this story. Blessed be.